Bingo. What number did you enter? Whose birthday was it, pal? Does he like me? <laughs> seven, 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 seven. The final ID card on the record. What? The number of the mysterious executive officer who entered the room that day. Oh, we still haven't confirmed that, have we? Well, no, we haven't, but we, you know, you we and just, I know we this. Just, we just we're, knew. Yeah. Is this how we confirm it? Oh, yeah. We just were... It was just so clear to us because there's no characters left. That, that is. Yeah, I, I forgot that they don't know that. Yeah. <laughs> you mean seven 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 seven? Not really. Kind of, uh, I think you're still one seven shy this time. <laughs> this can only mean one thing: that Chief Gant's ID number. Say, anyone care to look inside? Yes. Usually that's the point. <clears throat> no, let's not. Let's just go away. My knight in shining armor. Oh. Aww. This is the real deal, isn't it? The armor and these weapons. No. That's armor, not a person. <laughs> sure is, pal. The chief doesn't care for imitations. First the pipe, uh, first the pipe organ, now this armor. How many Dark Souls games has he played? <laughs> <laughs> you know how many taxpayers dollars must have gone to this room? This fucking final boss fight room. Wait up! Like that. What a very um poignant, actual, real life comment, Phoenix. Right? Yeah. This room looks like it actually is in an Orlando, which itself is based on a French city, French castle. What? You mean we're we're paying for this? Yes. That's it. I'm not paying one cent of my taxes. Like it's either it's either way to go to jail, Emma. It's, it's either taxes or civil forfeiture. Or c civil seizures, or whatever it's called. You don't have any taxes to pay, you child. That's true. Shh. Be careful what you say. Who knows? The chief may be hiding in this armor as we speak. He is way too large. That'd yeah. be hilarious. I don't think he'd fit in there. Even if he did, he'd never be able to get back out. Cut it out. You guys don't know how to s how scary that guy can be. How yeah, scary I do. is he? Gumshoe. You can see pretty far from 15 stories up. If you were to drop that suit of armor from here, you would kill someone. <laughs> At first, the chief wanted to use stained glass for his window. Really? Why didn't he? They say he changed his mind because he wouldn't be able to see the view. Hmm, oh. He wants to see, he wants to lord it over everyone and see all of the world. There is stained glass. Yeah, I was up there, that's what I was supposed to say. Yeah, there's stained glass at the top. It's either stained glass or that like ripply glass. Stained glass or not, it's a huge window. This is 100% a boss fight room. You cannot convince me otherwise. Okay, look in the safe. Just being sure we didn't forget anything. I like how you saved that for last because you're yeah. like a showman. Is there any money in there? How much does he have stashed away? Gumshoe needs money because he's doesn't get paid a lot. Look, it's it, it, it's a a a oh hey a shard from a broken cup. This somehow looks familiar. Where have I seen this before? There's that, something else in here too. Is that writing? Maybe I thought it was, but like there's no writing on the rest of it. There's yeah, just blood, right? I don't remember there being writing on it. A handprint? What's this? It looks like a piece of leather cloth. Like a cowboy would wear? This is a handprint, isn't it? Hey, I saw someone wearing a shirt like that once. Yeah, a cowboy. You think the chief made up the design? Uh, I don't think so. You... Dance motherfucker. Oh, well, it was just a thought. Is that it? Is that... All that was in the safe? Apparently so. It's empty now. A piece of cloth with a handprint on it and a broken shard from a cup. They look like pe uh, they look like pieces of evidence. Yeah, but unless you can prove they have something to do with this case, I'm afraid I can't just let you take them. After all, it's my neck on the line here. Great. And I have to prove their relevancy to get them. 
How are these two items related to the SL9 incident? Come on, there's got to be something we can show the detective. How about know one a of vase? Them. We can probably a fingerprint the other one, maybe. With our handy dusting kit. Detective Gumshoe, could you happen to look at this jar, the one that you've looked at for hours because you've already tried to put it together? And we put it together in two minutes. I remember when the three of us put that back together. Ah, those were the days. Wasn't that like two days ago? Yeah. Kind of early to be nostalgic. Wasn't this jar a piece of evidence from that case? Oh god, it was yesterday. Oh yeah, huh? Yeah. That's right. One of the shards had an SL9 incident sticker on it. Doesn't this ring any bells? You know that fragment we just found? You mean this one that was in the safe? Yeah, that one. That was in the safe. <laughs> now that you mention it, it rings a lot of bells. Let's see if it fits. Assemble fragments again. Here, let me see that shard. I'll take a crack at this. Go ahead, pal. Show us what a rookie can do. Mr. Wright, here's some glue. If I can piece this together again, it'll prove Chief Gant was knowingly hiding evidence for some reason. Here goes. <laughs> wow, how will I ever solve puzzle? Too hard. Can't handle. I was gonna take this chance to eat something a little bit. <laughs> so I'm just gonna do it awkward right now. Oh, cool. Wow. Wow. She so says it's not blood on there. It's uh, there's not writing on there. It's just blood, like I thought it was. Beautiful blood. Why is the stock market crashing on the vase? Huh? <laughs> this is like a weird check mark. I'm like, what's up? What is this line graph? What would cause that to happen? This is not like a normal like blood splatter. It looks like a bunch of flower petals and then a check mark. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I kind of see. I see a face. The two dots like at That's, the top. You see poon poon. That nose. Uh, I could see that. I see. I thought he's I was crying. Like, I was looking at that. At that Poon Poon's as, crying. Well, that's fitting. His, his, his left eye. Our right. From our right. It's our right. See, I like, saw that's his nose. I saw that nose as the mouth, and then I saw uh, the line above it to the left as the nose. It and always then, was confusingly his nose mouth. It's kind of hard to tell what you're looking at. It's his little snoot. His little snoot snoot. And he's crying. Which he should. <laughs> yes. There, it fits like a charm. That, of course, means. Chief Gant willingly and knowingly hid a piece of this jar in his safe. <gasps> in other words, he concealed a piece of evidence from the SL9 incident. But... Hey guys, get a load of this. What is it? This piece you just attached. It's different from the others. <laughs> it looks even more like a face. Now it doesn't. <laughs> There's a reddish line on it. A reddish line. That's blood. I don't get it! <laughs> we. What, what, what's new? Why would Chief Gant hide this in his safe? Because another it's another person's blood, maybe. He's a serial killer. Well, that's not good. Because <laughs> hmm. maybe there are two blood samples on there, instead of just the one, and maybe he's hiding the one that has his blood on it. But I don't know how you'd figure that out, but you can't like look at it and figure out which blood's yours necessarily. Activate blood o vision. So he won't let us take the stuff out of the safe unless we prove its relevancy. But we didn't. Oh, never mind. I guess we didn't really have to prove the relevancy of this because it says SL9 right on it. It's pretty straightforward. <laughs> now we want to get the other piece of evidence, which was a handprint. Which I think we can use that on, maybe? Detective Gumshoe, I'd like you to have a look at this. Hey, I know what that is. So you want me to take some fingerprints? That's a great idea, Detective. I have those, never. <laughs> 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 Alright, go to town, sheesh. What are you doing? Why are you sticking out your hand like that? Oh my gosh. 
Go ahead, take my fingerprint. That's not how you do that. That's not what we're doing. You, do, you don't even do that with that. You do that with ink. That's true. <laughs> you don't do it. You work at a police station. You don't use a dusting kit to get a fingerprint out of real You work hand. at a police station, sir. Um, it's not your fingerprints we want to take. Huh? <clears throat> Come on, this isn't the time for jokes. We're talking about the cloth we found in the safe. Oh! <laughs> I knew that. The one with the handprint on it, right? Sheesh, where's your sense of humor? You killed it. Okay, Mr. Wright, let's check for prints. Sprinkle the powder on the cloth. Then once they've been absorbed into the prints, blow the rest away. What are you, my mom? I don't have to be told a million times. Wow. Does, does your mom talk to you about fingerprinting? <laughs> the, um... Oop. Oh, okay, weird. <laughs> well, yeah, you a little bit... Uh, not really where the finger was, but okay. It well, just took me to a different planet just now. Trying to fill the entire screen. We. It's just, uh... I guess this is the weird... This weird the reason why this weird minigame is here, specifically, is because of a th thing I always forget about, because I didn't really use my DS very much, because I didn't really... Like, I fell out of favor with handheld games entirely, pretty much. Uh, the DS had a sensor that you could blow on. Yeah. So this is like a big gimmick for a lot of DS games, is that you could blow on the game to do this or that. Which always seemed like the absolute strangest thing to include in a handheld console. So a, a like game- Like of all of your priorities, the attack- the ability to blow was like, but why? Well, okay, there's a few games I can think of that had a great use for that. One being Nintendogs. Blow uh, on your dog, you they love it. Blow bubbles. <laughs> blow bubbles and your dogs would eat them out of the air. Stuff like that. And, and then I think- in, there's a game that no one like freaking knows or likes, but it's Chibi Robo Park Patrol. Nobody knows or likes. It's Park Patrol, and you're Chibi Robo, but you're working on oh, a, pu like a spin on a thing. public park, and you're trying to make the public park fun for everyone. And I remember the DS screen. You you like you you like play records, and see, like you. I scratched up my DS screen beyond repair playing that oh, game because no. I used my finger and I used like my, my nail scraped up the bottom screen. But I think there was like blowing parts of it. But, uh, it was a goofy-ass game. Oh, no, I put too much on. I've ruined the fingerprint forever, I guess. The killer goes free. Goodbye. <laughs> hmm, I gave it my best shot. That kind of result won't be any good for matching prints, will it? But it doesn't look like we'll get any, a clearer result from this print. Okay, let's try a different finger, then. Oh, that, that was just one finger? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Which one did I click on? It was the it was the um, pointer finger. The it's, like, it, it's confusing because it says A to dust, not select or something. So can, like can, I, I thought I was. Can you float upwards and get yeah, that? I thought I was just applying dust like right now. <laughs> I thought okay. I was just applying dust on that screen. So I thought I, I thought I was doing the entire hand just now, not one finger. You fool. Apparently this isn't enough somehow. What <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> it's like crystal clear. You got the edges. There we go. It's gonna be Lana. But that was Bruce Goodman. Lana! Oh, it's not. It was Bruce Goodman. Was it? Oh, no, never no. mind. Ha ha ha. Oh, it's Emma Sky. What? Oh my god. Oh my god. Gender female. <laughs> Wee woo, wee woo, wee woo. Arrest her now. No. How can this be? That's kind of confusing. What are Emma's fingerprints <clears throat> doing here? Hey, you found a match? Whose fingerprints were they? How could the fingerprints of the person known to be at the scene of the crime be on the vase? Was it like, um, because I'm assuming that's Jake Marshall's vest because he wears leather because he's a cowboy. Um, was oh, right, right. This isn't the vase. This is some piece of thing. This is a, a leather right. cloth. Um, I think she, maybe she was she like did she like grab onto him I mean, when at, he saved her or something like. I mean, at the moment we don't have like enough context about what it is even from. Yeah. But no, they said it was a shirt. They said it looks like a shirt, and they're talking about how hmm. he's. Come, she's like, I've seen a shirt like that before. Um, I think it's Jake Marshall's shirt. Huh? Oh, uh, it, it seems the prints are too old. 
They aren't clear enough to get a match. Yeah, I was gonna say, is there- I mean, I'm assuming there isn't- I don't really know if there's a time limit. Uh, uh, I think I'm printing stuff, although I'm sure, like, dust and other, like, uh, factors yeah, of time will safe, affect- though. Yeah, but- Oh, that's too bad. I thought they'd be Dark's prints. Hey, you. Over here. Even though we're the only three people in the room. She'll never notice. <laughs> What's going on here? What are that kid's prints doing inside the chief's safe? Don't ask me. Let's just keep this information for, from Emma for now. Why don't you just ask her, like, hey, does this look familiar? Here. Maybe you should hold on to this. Ruin the evidence so that the fingerprints go away. A piece of cloth. Hmm. Well, was I any help? Not really. Of course. Thanks to your ID card, we were able to get some hard evidence. That part actually was very useful. And we don't know what to call it. Uh-oh. Now that's not very kind, is it? In other words, if it wasn't for his ID card, he would have been useless. Isn't that right, you and the coat? <gasps> Eek! It's Chief Gant. We didn't think he'd be back so soon. Uh, well, I mean, I feel like it's been hours. It don't, don't just say that, like, yeah. outright. Like, oops. But fortunately, I'm a man who believes in science. As I was walking to my meeting, I happened to look out a window and saw a stray dog run into a pole. That must be. That must be. Yeah, that was, I was to say, like, that must be Jigumshu. Uh, <laughs> fucking idiot. You're thinking of Kiki? I was gonna say, I'm gonna think of Gumshu next time Kiki does that, because she yeah. runs into stuff all the time. Just then I thought of a certain detective. What do you. you do you mean, me, me sir? Now then. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to ask you all to leave. Y yes, sir. Sorry. That's why I saved the safe for last, because whenever you do the story thing, you might get kicked out of a location. Oh, you in a cut in the coat. M me, sir? Drop off your ID on the way out. You won't be needing it anymore. Hmm? Yeah, I know he's fucking he's fired. Been fired. So there's no way you wouldn't get fired for this. But, sir. Ooh, that's a face. Now get out. It, yes, sir. We'll be on our way out too then. Wait, you, the one without the spiky hair. Don't go yet. M m me, sir? I'd like a word with you. Oh no, don't don't leave her alone with him. But, but, sir, I'm not a licensed blah blah blah. Sci scientific investigator. Scientific yet. investigator yet. You with the spiky hair, you're free to go. Don't leave her. Hey, don't leave her here. M Mr. Wright! You can't. He's a freaking murderer. She's an underage Emma's girl dead in high now. school. Don't leave her alone She's with this old dead. man. She's dead. She's the second murderer. Uh, oh my god. I'm gonna miss her so much. Look, pal. If I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. The chief's office is off limits. Well, too late now, buddy. But no, you just had to go sneaking in there like that, didn't you? Poor gumshoe. I thought you said you didn't care anymore if you were fired. Yeah, but if I knew it'd be like this, I never would have said it. I never thought I'd be fired. <laughs> when I said I might be yeah. fired. Now that I've seen the evidence Chief Gant was hiding in his office, I think I'm finally starting to get the picture. But why has she kept eerily silent about it all this time? Anyway, you listening to me? No. I'm gonna try to smooth things over with the chief again. Later, pal. Mm-mm. Good luck with that. Bye-bye. I think your chicken fried fucked. <laughs> Kentucky fried fucked, damn it. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> your kitchen fresh fucked? <laughs> Uh, uh, did they give up on that? I think they were re trying to rename themselves to Kitchen Fresh Chicken. Yeah, I just it was the same acronym. It just doesn't. I think they still technically that's still technically their moniker. I think just everyone just says KFC. Yeah. After that, I heard from Emma. She said the police wanted to ask her some questions. She's gonna get murdered. We just left her there, so she'll be busy for the rest of the day. Poor oh, no. Emma. I don't think Lana's gonna be happy about this. No, she'll be pissed at you. I see. So the chief asked Emma 
to come in for questioning. I don't know, I had a hard time with that. It's no use thinking about it. Tomorrow's the final day in court. I'm committed to do everything I can to defend you, which is why I'm here. But I've already told you all I can. What you've told me over these past couple of days is absolutely nothing. Yeah. Not a single useful thing. Yeah. Really? I believe I did mention something quite important. Something I told you right at the beginning. I said that I was the one who stabbed Detective Goodman. You know, I think I finally figured it out. I know who it is who that's lurking behind your words. Mia did a good job mentoring you. I'm rather jealous. It seems Edgeworth was right. Edgeworth? Once you're convinced you know something, no one can persuade you otherwise. Thick-headed is the term he used, I believe. Now's my chance to get her to tell me the rest of the story. Oh my god, we're here! I have to admit, I was more than a little perplexed at first. You insisted you did it, yet there was no incriminating evidence. Except for the photo of you at the scene of the crime? What the fuck? Well, there's that photo, but that, you know, the stabbing photo is obviously not a real photo. It's like our imagery yeah. in our head. But like, that, the photo that's real is pretty incriminating. Yeah, that's true. That's when it hit me. It's not what you're unwilling- it's not that you're unwilling to tell the truth. It's that you're incapable of doing so because of a certain individual. What an intriguing notion. A certain individual, you say. So you think I'm protecting this person? Protecting? No, I think afraid of is more like it. If I'm not mistaken, the person in question may have persuaded you to silence. For argument's sake, Mr. Wright, whom may I ask is this person you're speaking of? The one I am supposedly so frightened of. What is this person's name? Well, Miss Guy? <laughs> Mr. Wright, you are addressing the Chief Prosecutor. Do not forget your place. I take it she's still not ready to spill the beans. My apologies. Could you please tell me a bit more about what you think you know? She turned 180 because she has to hide her face in her reaction. We were partners until two years ago. I respected him as a detective. Assuming he is respectable, then tell me something. Assuming he is respectable, oh, sorry. then tell me something. <laughs> Oops. Why would he try to hide his crimes? His crimes? Both you and Edgeworth will be brought before a board of inquiry for what you did. Specifically, hiding and forging evidence. Of course. These are serious offenses. Why is it, though, that Chief Gant's name was never mentioned? Chief Gant? Edgeworth didn't know the truth beyond the forgery. The only party who could have possibly tampered with the evidence was... Me. I had access because I was second in command of that investigation. Yes, you. But also one other, Damon Gant. If you intend to accuse Chief Gant, you'll need more than just words. Show me proof that Chief Gant falsified evidence in that case. Uh, you can do the broken vase, or... You... Or that, yeah. I just found this in a safe in, Chief's op in the Chief's office. This jar piece and this piece of cloth. You know what these are? They're pieces of evidence from the SL9 incident. I... The person concealing evidence was none other than Chief Gant himself. Now tell me, why are you taking all the blame for him? He threatens your sister? Touché, Mr. Wright. The fact that she her personality changed after this case makes me think that she always knew what really happened and then she was hiding it. Probably because she had like shouldered the burden to like save her sister. So, and that changes her because of the guilt and yeah. the weight of it. And also the fear that it could still, like, the threat could still be carried out. It is as you surmise. I cannot disobey the chief's orders. Even if it means being found guilty for murder. Why not? Come now, Mr. Wright. You can't possibly expect me to be able to tell you that. Three days ago, I had no choice but to cooperate. in the murder of Detective Goodman. 
Or perhaps I should say, follow orders. Yes, that's more accurate than cooperate. So I think she really did kill him. Yeah, she did. But, she, but he made her. Yep. Although I can't tell you the details, I can say that I was given an order that day. I, I need, need you to dispose of Bruce uh -huh. Goodman's body. I need you to dispose of Bruce Goodman's body. <laughs> he said, just, what a fun way to say, I say it. I say, I say, I say, I say. <laughs> You'll find it inside the trunk of Miles Edgeworth's car. <laughs> He's a sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> I say, I say, you disposed of that body. Just as I suspected. Despite what everyone believes, you were not the one who murdered Detective Goodman. Correct. Oh, didn't kill her, just disposed of the body, which is why there's the photo of her with the body. Yeah, but they might, you know, they probably want to preserve her, her character, so they don't want to have her actually be a murderer, because they might not like her. I was trying to take the body out of Edgeworth's car. The trunk's nice. lock was broken. And I discovered that murder weapon while inspecting the body. The murder weapon? You mean Edgeworth's knife? No. When I found the body, this was the knife stuck in it. The SL9 knife. The SL9. Yeah, it is that knife. Hmm. It's got the little. Oh, it's got the little divot on it. Yep. Yeah. So she, and the uh, it's Edgeworth's knife from the trunk. So I guess she just took it out of his car and stabbed him. Oh, I see. Yeah, so she, she, she like isn't lying there. when she said that she stabbed him. Oh yeah. <laughs> she did stab him. Yeah. His body. The knife from the SL9 incident. Serial killer Joe Dark's knife. I couldn't just leave that knife in him. So I took it out and stabbed him with another knife. <laughs> that would be Edgeworth's knife? That's right. Even though he was already dead, my hands were shaking at the thought of stabbing him. That's why I ended up cutting my hand. That's embarrassing. <laughs> Like, even if your hands are shaking, like, that's a hell of a miscalculation. <laughs> that's... How do you get that far off? Well, she knows that guy, though. It's kind of, you know... Yeah, I but how do you it. cut yourself? I don't know. Have, like, you, have you ever stabbed a, a dead body, Keith? Do you know? It's a strange mistake to make. You, you see, you, you, like, stab your hand. You're like, like whoopsie dude. Oh, I thought that was the body. Oops. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, I'm trying to think of the logistics of how you even nervously stab yourself with, your, with a knife. And I'm like, what? <laughs> that you're holding? Did she pick up the wrong part of the knife? Maybe she was nervous, so she did that game where you put your fingers out and then you like stab between your fingers. That's a weird game to play dick, at that dick, moment. Dick, 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 <laughs> and then she missed because she was too nervous. Um yeah, that's just strange. Yeah, I can't I can't come up with an answer for this one. This is just too it's just a weird mistake to make. It's still uh I don't know. I'm trying to think about it on the Meekin scale of stupid wounds. Well, Meekins is <laughs> capable of yeah. a lot of stupid things. Yeah. He's Meekins. And that's the reason for the bandage in your right hand. Yes. It seems that I got blood on the victim's shoe as well. And then... She saw me just as I plunged the knife in. So that is a real picture. Why she looks so aggressive while doing it? She could just just kind of slide to, like, it. Psych yourself up to do it. Just slide it. Just slide it in the. It's like it's like it's like when you have a thumb. It does feel like if you do it this forcefully from this distance, you're likely to miss the wound and make a second wound. It's like it's like when you take That's a thumb tack out evidence. of the wall and then you go and you find the hole and you use the same hole to put the thumb, another thumb tack back in. Like how did she cut herself? She cut herself with the hand that's holding the knife somehow. <laughs> like, I don't, what are the logistics of that mistake? I'm so confused. It doesn't seem like she's wounded yet. But yeah, this this giant act, aggressive thrust is like, on one hand, I'm like, okay, she's like psyching herself up to go through with it. But on the other hand, I'm like, you're going to make a new second wound next to the original one. And that's going to come up in forensics, like way noticeably. It's a bad idea. So I, so I guess uh, Miss Star actually was... Telling the, telling the truth and being heroic? Yeah. Weird. She did actually see her stab. And tried body. to climb the fence and then went around and ran in her high heels. <laughs> it's the funniest image. <laughs> and taking five minutes somehow. Yeah. Miss Star, huh? 
All she had to do is run across a long, uh, short parking lot that only fits, like, four cars end to end. But there's a fence between them. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying, like... Oh, you mean, like, the hallway? I'm saying she took five minutes to cross a hallway that's only four cars long. Yeah, that's like, true. <laughs> what the fuck? And somebody, somebody responded like, well, she had to try, she she lost time because she tried to f open the locked door first. And I'm like, this still doesn't clock out. No. <laughs> it's like, what did she like slowly tiptoe all the way there? Like, wasn't she running? It's just four car length. That's not a big parking lot. So the hallway next to it's not long either. Why do you need the, t why did you need to hide uh, Dark's knife so badly? That's why it's in the muffler. Mm-hmm. It took a lot of work to finally close the dark case two years ago. It was over with. I didn't ever want it to be opened again. My intent was to prevent that, by whatever means possible. So, you hid Dark's knife. The weapon used to stab the detective was evidence in the Joe Dark case. If word got out, which it would, the reporters would have, have a field day with that. So you wrapped the knife in your scarf and hid it. In Edgeworth's exhaust pipe. Right. Then I called my sister to tell her what happened and to ask her to hide the knife that was inside my muffler. <laughs> inside her muffler in the muffler? <laughs> inside her muffler inside Edgeworth's muffler. Mufflerception. <laughs> you asked Emma? I didn't want anyone on the force to know about this. That would explain why Emma was is so confident. About Lana's innocence. Speaking of phone calls, I had a bad feeling about one of them that day. A bad feeling? The truth is, after I received those orders from Chief Gant, the first thing I did was make a phone call. A phone call to patrolman Jake Marshall. To Marshall? Why on earth would you call him? The lead investigator for the SL9 incident had been murdered. I wanted that fact to be kept hidden and I needed help. He was the only other person I could trust. Or at least I thought I could trust him at the time. So this whole time, the knife that cut Meekins was just the knife he uses to shave all the time, and it just never entered evidence? Because it was presumed to be the SL9 knife, which definitely was not there, because that happened at the same time as the crime. Yeah, I mean, didn't he address that? Didn't he say, like, you mean this knife? And it was the <laughs> one that he was, like, shaving with? Yeah, it's like, hmm. Because, yeah, uh, it wasn't entirely clear at the time, because they could have hit it later or something, but... Yeah, Edgeworth's knife and the SO9 knife were both at Edgeworth's car. Yeah, and no, we already, we already uh, addressed the knives. fact that the knife that stabbed Meekins was the one that uh, he used it sh to shave. Why is it in evidence? Because that because no murder actually happened, so it's not no one's counting it as anything. It's still a crime. Yeah, but we he only assaulted we, somebody. We only deal with murders here. Apparently. However, it seems that after I spoke to him, he went off on an escapade of his own. Oh, you mean... Not wanting the case to die, he decided to take things into his own hands. He disguised himself as Detective Goodman and tried to steal the evidence. He had already stolen the ID card, but it seemed it seems he, has still, he still hadn't made up his mind to break into the evidence room. After my phone call, any remaining doubts he had must have disappeared. So your phone call caused the incident in the evidence room. This is weird. Because we've essentially... We're essentially solving the case right now? Yeah. Outside of the trial? <laughs> I uh, guess... I guess... Uh, I think that's... I think that must mean that the actual trial final day is going to be us solving the SL9 case. And getting and getting Gant for that. Yeah, because in this case we like already know the nitty gritty about. And I guess we do still need to confirm that Gant actually stabbed uh, this guy too. Yeah, because I mean, we don't know like how he got stabbed. Because he's dead. Just yeah, I had to deal with his body. Yeah, I I'm yeah, afraid that's all I can is, tell you. This is like the most helpful uh, our primary defendant witness has been in a long time. I think so. Like she was actually helpful this whole time. She was just being obstinate because she couldn't because she's being blackmailed. So I have like more respect for her because mm. it wasn't as if she was just like an idiot or someone who like but isn't Lana. talking to us for stubborn reasons. You've earned my respect, Mr. Wright, both as a defense attorney and an investigator. Now, please. Don't pursue this any further in court tomorrow. Tomorrow's trial. 
There's only one way to drive off Lana's demons. I've got to get to the bottom of everything. Detective Goodman's real murder. And what went down in the chief's office two years ago. They're the same person, probably. If nothing else, uh... Marshall has a hell of an alibi. <laughs> uh, Gant's like the only remaining character in the story. What about Meekins? No, he has Meekins an alibi has too. An, yeah, yeah. Me Meekins, Marshall, and... Cough Up Queen have alibis. <laughs> that, yeah, that is true. And because Cough Up Queen was in the guard room. Edgeworth? Who should have been a should have been a suspect this whole time, but isn't. Yeah, Edward still kind of lacks an alibi. His best alibi is from the supposed murder. Is the, the current uh, accused is <laughs> the, the closest thing to he has to an alibi. Maybe there's a secretary upstairs. <laughs> She's like, oh, he was up here. Insert like last minute new character. <laughs> Brand new character at the last second. Here we go. The final day. Here comes the trial. Here comes the trial. Less happy song. <laughs> <laughs>